Hi guys, in this video I'm going to go over the whole of B2 cell division. Uh, it starts at looking at uh, why cells actually need to divide. So if you look at a cell, um, we need to make replicas of itself in order to grow, uh, repair damage, and fight infection. But how does it do this? Well, the process is called mitosis. Uh, where cells make exact replicas of the parent cells that it comes from. Uh, you make two daughter cells, as you can see down here. Uh, this, this is showing uh, mitosis. You make two daughter cells uh, from one parent cell. So let's look at the stages of mitosis. Uh, here you can say that, that the cell uh, makes a replica of itself. So here's the normal amount of chromosomes uh, in a cell. Uh, it makes an exact replica of itself and grows. Okay, the cell will grow, uh, make more mitochondria and ribosomes. Uh, it will grow and make uh, copies of itself. Uh, and this is the longest stage of mitosis. After making copies of itself, um, they the D, the chromosomes will align at opposite ends uh, of the the cell and it will pre prepare to break away so this is um this is the time when the chromosomes align themselves at different sides uh, and they start to break away the nucleus starts to divide and this is the stage which is called uh, mitosis this stage and then finally, the, the last stage of cell division is the breaking apart. Uh, this breaking apart, the breaking apart is when uh, the actual cell membrane divides and you have uh, the two daughter cells. Uh, important things to remember about the cell is in each uh, adult cell, you have 46 chromosomes. So you always will have 46 chromosomes and they will always be the same in each adult cell. So if you look at this cell, it will have the same 46 chromosomes as this cell here. There are two types of cells that do not undergo uh, mitosis. They go under uh, a different a type of cell division called meiosis. Um, and meiosis does not form exact replicas and we'll talk about that now. It only happens in gametes, which are sex cells, which in males is sperm and females is egg cells. And um, you don't want to make exact replicas of them. So it, it doesn't use mitosis. It uses the, the process of meiosis. The first stage of meiosis is just the same as mitosis in the fact that it makes a copy of itself. Um, however, it's different um, from mitosis as when it, uh, it makes copies of itself, it doesn't uh, align exactly um, with like, okay? Uh, sections of DNA are exchanged, um, so it's not producing exact clones. Um, and then during the, the stage, stage of splitting, so during the meiosis stage, when the nucleus actually divides, uh, you can see that DNA uh, has been exchanged and you get actually four daughter cells that are non-identical. And that's due to the DNA uh, exchanging. Last important point about meiosis is each one of these daughter cells only has 23 chromosomes. Not like a normal adult cell which has 46. At the moment of conception, when the sperm cell meets the egg cell, you are only one cell. However, by the time you reach adulthood, you're made up of 37.2 trillion cells. Um, now, it, you'll notice that in your body, not all your cells are the, exactly the same. It's because as your cells grow and divide, they begin to also differentiate into uh, different cells that have different roles and different functions for different parts of your body. Uh, the diagram here uh, showing the stem cell uh, shows all the different cells that could it could develop into, for example, a sex cell, a muscle cell, a fat cell, and so forth. But at what stage in humans does and animals does this differentiation take place? Well, a lot of this differentiation takes place uh, when you are an embryo. 
uh, when you're just a collection of cells you will start uh, your cells will start differentiating uh, in, and you can see that with babies okay you can you can see that they start to develop features at different rates uh, as the different cells are being made however there are also a few adult stem cells uh, found in places like bone marrow um, and that the reserve of that is for if you get an infection or damaged cells uh, your body uh, can reproduce uh, cells uh, to become specialized However, specialization is usually uh, restricted to uh, when you are very young, uh, not very much specialization occurs in adults and most cell division is restricted to mitosis. As a result of this, um, your body can uh, not really uh, fight off some types of injury. Uh, for example, paralysis, uh, your body will never ever recuperate and make the nerve cells in your back that are needed. Also, a type 1 diabetes where your pancreas uses specialist cells uh, in order to produce the insulin, they will never recover. Uh, and that's why there is so much uh, research going into stem cells and how we can produce uh, artificial uh, cells that we can then um, implant into patients that suffer from paralysis, uh, diabetes, it, even um, some, some more complex things like Alzheimer's. People are looking into stem cell research uh, in order to try and help them diseases. Now, plant cells don't have this problem. Plant cells, um, they, they contain um, lots of specialized cells, uh, lots of unspecialized cells, I mean, uh, in parts of their plant called meristems, uh, such as in, inside the roots, there is lots of unspecialized cells. As a result of this, uh, you can clone plants. Um, and you, you can see that if you just take a cutting off a, a plant and then plant it somewhere, uh, it can actually make a clone of itself. Actually, people use cuttings from plants in order to preserve really rare uh, and beautiful plants. And uh, you can actually uh, clone them for a, a really cheap price and bring the price down of that rare plant if um, you can reproduce it on a large scale using cuttings. In addition to this, you can uh, use cloning uh, of plants uh, to, to have a particular uh, trait. For example, disease-resistant bananas. Uh, you, you could make sure that the, the clone of it had that gene and uh, reproduce on a really large scale. So I said that there was a lot of research going into um, stem cells and how they can be used to treat uh, illnesses such as uh, blindness, uh, diabetes, uh, paralysis in the spine. Um, well, the, most of the uh, stem cells are harvested from embryos. And this is a very uh, contentious subject uh, because um, there, there are some religious uh, beliefs that you, sh you shouldn't take a, a, a living being and embryo is a living being. Um, also, uh, the fact that it could cause cancer in later life. You've got to think these stem cells ha uh, have to divide very quickly uh, and it's thought maybe that they can cause cancer in later life. Uh, also, uh, quite a lot of stem cells actually get wasted. Um, there's, there's a lot of uh, waste from trialing uh, the, this this method. But people do still uh, re research uh, embryonic stem cells because it does have its positives uh, in the fact that you have many un unspecialized cells, uh, so there is many cures that it, it could potentially uh, have, and also the fact uh, that it could. Uh, lead into uh, more cancer research. Um, there is another way of harvesting stem cells and that is found with adult stem cells uh, which is usually harvested from uh, bone marrow. Um, you, you have the, the positives of uh, your, your not affecting a life um, and you, you can get rid of a lot of the rigid religious uh, controversy around it. Um, and also, if you take the stem cell directly from the patient, uh, you have um, no chance of it being rejected um, or very little chance of it being rejected as it actually comes from your body, the stem cell. 
But saying this, it does also have its negatives in the fact that you don't have as many possibilities. Um, there's not as many cells that it can uh, become uh, as it has a genetic makeup uh, different to, to an embryo. And also it's been found that adult stem cells often have a shorter uh, life outside of the body. So you have to work very quickly uh, when using them as well.